because I hate myself. Now, so, um, this is just going to kind of, you know, explain why I go through the uh, effort of running Gen 2. Um, so, like most Linux users, I don't like the, uh, the, the spookiness of um, mostly Windows. Um, Mac OS is, is definitely doing some spooky stuff as, as well that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, so there's, there's some of that. Uh, but one of the big reasons why I run Gen 2 is uh, I, I'm a tinkerer. So for anybody who doesn't know, I'm, I'm a software engineer by, by trade. Um, so, you know, I, I like playing around with software, uh, I like tinkering with things, and Gentoo is very much a tinkerer's operating system. If, if you want something that just works right out of the box and you don't have to do a whole lot with and you don't really have to, you know, try to maintain it or, or try to learn more about your system so that you can better maintain it. It's not an oper it's not an operating system for you. Um, so you really, for the most part, I don't know of a whole lot of people that actually need the the custom the customization that Gen two actually allows. Um, so with Gen two. Um, everything is compiled from source, so um, there you can get pre-compiled binaries um, for you know really big packages like Firefox or Chromium or uh, the kernel, but the um, I guess the the first class way of installing things is actually uh, just compiling it uh, compiling it locally um, and the way that Gen2 does that is with um, portage so um, in uh, Etsy portage make .conf, this is really where uh, the magic happens this is where you um, specify this is where you describe what your system looks like and what things you want support for. Um, so a lot of what you end up setting um, and playing around with is actually your, uh, your use flags. Um, and use flags are a way of compiling in support for things that you want. Um, and making sure that things that you don't want are not compiled in. Um, so, for example, uh, I have um, Xenorama. Uh, I have that global use flag enabled. Uh, if that's because I have a multi monitor set up, and Xenorama adds multi monitor support. Um, if I did not have a multi-monitor set up, um, I would not have that use flag. And then none of the packages that I compile or install on my system would have Xenorama support, which means potential, which means that the dependencies required for Xenorama wouldn't be installed if I don't need them and support in the actual applications themselves wouldn't be there. Um, uh, another thing is like uh, ZeroConf. So um, I have MDNS set up on my home network, which kind of makes it easy for me to SSH around uh, without having to maintain a DNS server or do any um, static IP addresses, um, MDNS can just, uh, MDNS resolves um, IP addresses even if they're, uh, 
even if they are uh, dynamic. Uh, the way that it does this is by uh, basically sending a request out on a um, multicast IP address in your subnetwork. Um, in my case, that's 192.168.1.255. Um, and it says, hey, um, can everybody report back your IP address? And if the other boxes on the network have uh, MDNS support, then they respond with their IP address and eventually everybody responds and uh, you get you get an IP address that you can actually use. Um, so for example, I have a uh, Raspberry Pi on my home network um, that is called that's named uh, Bonsai. Uh, so if I wanted to SSH into Bonsai, I would be able to do that by just saying, SSH bonsai.local, um, where .local is a reserved top-level domain for uh, MDNS. And right there, I'm, I'm, in, uh, I'm on Bonsai, uh, which is actually um, a uh, free BSD box. Uh, so I guess to kind of reiterate, if you don't know if you want to run Gentoo, uh, ask yourself how much do you enjoy tinkering and how much do you uh, and do you actually need the the customizability or do you want the customizability if not the the customizability is probably uh, more responsibility than you would want to uh, take on. But if you're more like me and you act, you enjoy tinkering and uh, you know playing around with configuration and settings on your computer is something that you you enjoy, um, then I'd say you know go ahead and give Gen Two a try. The uh, the wiki is is outstanding uh, and there's a lot of lessons that you can learn um, by running it. You really, um, in order to get it installed, you need to be familiar with Linux. Um, and when you run Gen 2, or when, you, when you're installing it, you need to be really familiar with um, you know, the whole system. And it really does a good job of teaching you um, all of the inner workings of your system. You know, uh, your init RAM FS, your kernel, how does all of that work together, your bootloader. Um, so, you know, it's it, for me personally, it's less about the custom the customizability, I don't really need that. And it's more about the, um, the learning experiences that are offered um, by Gen2. So yeah, if, if you enjoy tinkering and that sounds like something up your alley, I would definitely give Gen2 a try.